and welcome back. I'm Axion. I'm Sint. And this is Hollow Knight and Metamorphosis. Yep. Uh, last time we talked about um, the plot itself as well as looking a little deeper into the character of Gregor Samsa himself. But um, it's kind of time to start looking into the various themes and readings you can get from the Metamorphosis. And I think the most telling is the one that I think resonates the most with uh, Kafka's other work, as I've seen it heard, seen it said. Um, the idea of isolation and helplessness. That is and, definitely yeah. present. Um. Yeah. So, obviously the story is about a traveling salesman who, without any warning or explanation, wakes up one morning as a giant bug. His family is disgusted by him, and he very, very quickly loses the ability to communicate with them. So, um, can you think of more ways to- can you think of a better way to feel completely isolated from everyone than that? Go blind and deaf, on top of all that. Okay, yeah, th thank you for writing the, the uh, Hollow Knight Metamorphosis fanfiction that we didn't want or need. Good lord. You asked. I regret. Now, this is by no means to say that someone who is blind and deaf cannot have a fulfilling life. We, we've all heard of Helen Keller and the great strides she made once... But she had the advantage of people who were willing and able to teach her to communicate despite her disability. And people in similar situations today have people who hopefully have people who will give them that kind of assistance. Yeah, even... She had a support system and people who cared about her and would have helped take care of her even if she hadn't been able to learn to communicate as well as she did. Like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been cheap in that era, or even in this era, to have a private tutor who specialized in helping those uh, who, with uh, different abilities. Gregor Samsa's family didn't have that money, and they also didn't care about helping him aside from his sister and fleetingly his mother. And eventually both of them lost Give up. that. Yeah. Which we'll get into more later. But for now, we're just talking about the feeling of you are alone. No one cares about you. No one cares about what you're going through. No one is going to help you with your struggles. And if they do decide to help you a little bit, they're not going to understand you enough to actually do anything meaningful. And they're probably going to make it worse in the process. I'm so, hoping. Yep. Because we have that with his sister. Uh... Uh, Greta starts by uh, bringing him the food that he always liked while he was human, but his taste buds have changed. He can't eat it anymore. So it go. It, she has, he literally has to eat out of the trash because that's what he as a bug eats now, and his family doesn't really get it. His sister goes in and tries to clean up the room every now and then, which, as mentioned before, his father doesn't really like. So uh, here's a little bit of resonance that I don't like. Um, how many people during lockdown were stuck in a pretty bad family situation that they couldn't really do anything about? I I managed to get out of my bad family situation just before lockdown started. Yeah, Gregor can't. Gregor is locked in a room with a family that at best misunderstands him and at worst resents his existence. Mm -hmm. He is eventually killed as a result of this because uh well it's neglect that really just wears him down but also his father it's it's an accident but his father does throw something at him that pretty much cripples him for the rest of his short life so I yeah don't um, like these things i don't yeah, like these gregor things. is only safe when he is alone in his room away from all humanity his family will not discuss him with anyone else his family barely bothers to help take care of him. He's just alone. And he can't tell his family how much he's hurting because at, for a couple of reasons. One, complaining would make him a burden, as we mentioned before, and well, he already feels bad enough that he has become a burden to them when he was their sole breadwinner before. And two, 
he physically cannot communicate this to them. They do not understand him anymore. He used to be able to force himself with great effort to have to make a facsimile of what he used to sound like, but either that just faded very quickly after he became what he is, or he just no longer had the will to try. And honestly, either is pretty likely with just how bleak the story is. So, yeah. Gregor is alone. No one else has a condition like his. No one understands his condition. No one really understands what he needs or what would actually help him in his mental state. So his sister, in trying to help him, takes away everything that reminds him of his humanity, letting him sink further and further into being a bug with even less connection to them, to the point where they basically forget about him until he becomes an inconvenience. Yeah. Yeah. Isolation is a thing. And I think that's felt just as much as the whole uh, locked into a bad situation during lockdown is, is also the uh, not being able to go out with people responsibly. Uh, so many people have been just staying home alone trying to get what connection they can over like social media and such and just unable to make that human connection ah, yeah we are. and this feeds in pretty well with the uh, partnering theme of uh, helplessness and powerlessness not only is Gregor Samsa completely isolated from the rest of his family, like, they're physically there, but they might as well not be for all the help they've been giving him, because his sister gives up on it and eventually just declares that she wishes he would just die and just save them all the headache. Um, his mother faints at the sight of him, his father actively hates him from the moment he gets fired. But not only can you not communicate with them, it's... There are some stories about people who can't communicate, but they find other ways to overcome their circumstances and, in some way, affect the world around them. Gregor doesn't have that. Gregor can't affect the world around him, other than just, Hi, I'm a giant bug. Be disgusted by me. He sits alone in his room. He hides under the couch if anyone comes near. He scuttles around the walls because this is what he can do now. And that's really it. He has very limited agency, at least in any meaningful way. No one is forcing decisions upon him, but what can he do? He's stuck in the room. He can't go out. He can't work. He can't talk. There's nothing. Kind of like that bug we just killed. <laughs> stuck in that room, unable yep. to go anywhere. <laughs> Yep. But they, at least, could do something. I mean, you came in, and they could react to you in a way that would, you know, actually affect something. I don't think Gregor could. Probably not. So... Well, I mean, yeah. he could, but he didn't He didn't want to hurt his family. So. And even before that, we know Gregor was pretty powerless, because he was a low-level lackey at a job he couldn't stand. It was a dead-end job that was never going to go anywhere. He actually mentions that there are other salesmen who start later in the day and do possibly even better, so his boss insists he go out early when it's probably not going to be as effective. And then um, penalizes him for not doing well. Yep, so he's in a job that basically exists to take advantage of and abuse him. For a family that only sees him for his utility as having that job, like, it's not even, Gregor, are you sick? It's, Gregor, you're late for work. You're never late for work. Ever. So, yeah. Gregor is powerless in both uh, insect and human form. He's powerless at work. He's powerless with his family. He's powerless after he changes. It's just more obvious. Mm -hmm. 
He constantly dreams about doing something with his life, doing something to help his family beyond what he's already doing, but we can tell from the timeline he mentions that it's never going to happen. In another five years, I can quit. Yeah, how long until the boss decides, no, you owe more money? Just because I can. Or an unexpected expense hits the family and you're forced to work even longer to pay it off and etc, etc, etc. We've all made these little bargains with ourselves to kind of make ourselves feel as though we have some agency over our situations. I mean... But in many cases, we don't. Let's just take Gregor's situation and make it real. Gregor wakes up one morning after a fitful night, not transformed into a bug, because that's obviously the fantastical portion of this, but he wakes up, let's say, he can't feel his legs. Or, yeah, let's go with that. He can't feel his legs. You're actually getting ahead of uh, what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about that more specifically in a later topic, but we can go through this. Okay. So, yeah, he wakes up, he can't feel his legs. He... goes through all the rigmarole of getting out of bed. They finally get him to a doctor. It turns out he's got like a growth on his spine or something like cancer. And that's affecting his ability to walk. He's not going to be able to do his job. How many people... It's going to take a ton of time and money to deal with this if he even can afford that. He's not going to be able to work while he's recovering. Or while he's going through treatment. Uh, especially if he has to have surgery or, or in the modern day chemotherapy. He's not going to be able to work. Especially a job like Traveling Salesman. I did not know those spikes could hurt enemies. <laughs> uh, he's not going to be able to do a job like Traveling uh, and doing sales work uh, on the road when he's undergoing like surgery or chemo he's going to be out of commission until he is fully recovered from this malady or infection and during that time there's going to be massive expenses any savings that he has is going to go out the window. Uh, you've already mentioned he, the story says that the insurance provided by his company is openly hostile. So they're not going to be... They're going to be looking for every opportunity to weasel out of paying for this. That's not really a whole lot different from the actual situation in the story other than it lacks the fantastical elements. Yep. And in the same situation, you're by yourself. Even with people around you, they don't understand what you're going through or refuse to understand. So you're still on your own. And there's nothing you can do to change your situation for the better. It's not even your fault. You did everything right. But the world is cruel and random and doesn't make sense. And again, that's the point. Kafka did not write happy stories. Kafka wrote about a bleak world that doesn't care about people because society cares about perpetuating society. The individuals will fall by the wayside to make sure that society persists, regardless of whether or not it is a good society. More or less. And yeah, I'm not really sure what else we can say on that. That does seem like a pretty decent place. Well, sad, but appropriate place to seems like a thematically wrapped up place to stop. We're not going to say good because... <sighs> yep. Yeah. 
we'll call it there and see you next time. Yep.